Within the pages of each issue of Nintendo Force Magazine, you will find an exclusive interview with a creator of video games, comics, or other cool things related to being a Nintendo fan. Today, the NF interview section makes the jump here to YouTube so that we can host a video chat with the authors of the Mega Man X Maverick Hunters Field Guide, the husband and wife duo of David Oxford and Nadia Oxford. What exactly goes into the making of an officially licensed Mega Man product like this? Let's find out. All right, everybody, we are joined today by the authors of the Mega Man X Maverick Hunters Field Guide. We have Nadia Oxford. Hello, we great have to be David here. Oxford. Howdy. And, and we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, this book here. Oh, I, I've never seen that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> It's a surprise to everybody. Uh, all right, so we've got the Maverick Hunters Field Guide. Uh, what am I holding here? Who wants to give the elevator pitch for what this thing is? Well, David, you go, because you wrote most of it. I, I did contribute <laughs> a lot, but you, you're you the boss. Um, okay, so it is a follow-up to the Mega Man Robot Master Field Guide, uh, which also has a hardback updated edition that released uh, earlier this year, I believe. Mm -hmm. And this one, of course, is all about, instead of the original Mega Man series, we've got the Mega Man X series and the many Mavericks, Maverick Hunters, Resistance, Rebellion, and all kinds of other Reploids found within. What are we looking at here? What, what's the structure of this? A sexy what, robot. What is a field guide? <laughs> Basically, uh, we, we, we kind of wrote it from the perspective of, say, you're a new Maverick Hunter, and this is the thing they hand you. Uh, in case of emergency, like in case your, I don't know, your internals are all crashed or in case you have no access to electricity, you're a Maverick Hunter, you're on the field, here's what you need to know about the enemy. So we kind of wrote it in a more fun narrative style, whereas the Mega Man Robot Masters Field Guide is definitely more, um, kind of like more statistic based. It's more... Straightforward. Uh, yeah, more straightforward. This is a little more narrative rich, which I, I, I had a lot of fun writing, frankly. Yeah, it's it's meant to be more of a in-universe item, of course, putting the reader in the position, as Nadia said, of being a new Maverick Hunter. Basically, it's like, you know, the same thing you could find online, but more abridged, like, you know, if you're off the grid, kind of a uh, in-case-of-emergency kind of thing. Gotcha. Yeah, all right. So I, I'm a rookie recruit. I'm out in the field. My Wi-Fi goes down, and, and all of a sudden, <laughs> I, I'm being attacked by Gravity Beetle. What what do I do? Well, I, I have the information at my fingertips. I I know that his his weakness is the ray splasher. So Precisely. I, I, I'm going to be good if I, if I have uh, access her, to Provided you, you kick Neon Tiger's <laughs> hand, yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, and it also <laughs> informs you, you of the attacks he's been known to use, and, you know, so you know what to watch out for and what it can do to you, that kind of thing. Okay. Well, one of my favorite elements is, I think for some of the more extreme ends, like uh, Sigma, it's like, yeah, you're not ready, do not engage, just draw back, call in reinforcements, <laughs> keep your distance. <laughs> no, no, yes. take on Sigma by yourself, it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my immediate takeaways. Now, I, I knew that Sigma had appeared a lot in different Mega Man X games, but you flip through this, and it, it really reinforces the fact that this guy just keeps coming back. <laughs> he does. Again and again. Like, there's 20 different Sigma. I can't, I can't even count them all. You flip, and you keep flipping, and there's still more Sigmas. Sigmas forever. It's like <laughs> driving through of, an endless neighborhood. 10 out of 10 games. <laughs> He's, like, only oh not been in one of them. And that was no, the RPG like, spinoff. E even oh, Bowser right. doesn't have that much consistency. No, Bowser took no. a break. Bowser took a couple of breaks, like with warts, like, hey, you handle this. So, the Mega Man X Maverick Hunters Field Guide came out uh, a couple of months ago, as we are recording this. And you mentioned the mm -hmm. predecessor. We have the... Ah, oh, look at that handsome boy. The Robot yep. Masters Field Guide. Now, this was the classic series. And this is the updated yep. version. You got, yep. got Blockman. And you... And you, you wouldn't have had, <laughs> you got you wouldn't have had him a, a couple no, of years ago. No, you got to have him because he has he has the Pink Floyd quote, so he gets on there automatically. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
He's he's one of my favorites, so yeah, I'm glad he made the uh, cover. I liked him, yeah. If it, if it had been my choice, it would have been like Blockman and Turbo Man and Nitro Man. And well, <laughs> my first, I think my personal favorite is probably Gyro Man, and he actually made the cover, so I'm pretty happy about that. I just love it. A- is Gyro Man your favorite? I actually really like, um, who was the ice skating robot? Tundra Man. I thought he yeah. was awesome. Yeah, Tundra Man is cool. Yeah, he was cool. Uh, okay, so uh, at this point, you two have completed two full Mega Man books, uh, but how did that come about to begin with? What what were your qualifications for being the people that were turned to uh, to speak professionally, intelligently on the subject of Mega Man? I'm not about we're going to man. Disney World. Wait a minute, that was that's the wrong question. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you 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 go ahead and take this one. Well, it started a long time ago, Web 1.0. Um, I was a Mega Man fan, like, from the very start. And then as soon as I got on the internet, which was, God, 1995, I was like, let's look up Mega Man. So I did. And it just has been that way ever since I've been part of the fandom. I I met David. We got married. It's been 20 years. We're still steeped in Mega Man. And we'll probably uh, die by Mega Man's hand somehow. (laughs) Well, then somebody will absorb your power and carry on. There you go. Very good. You're absolutely right. We will live on. That's the hope. Very cool. Yes. I have memories of going to the Mega Man homepage. Uh, ah. Mandy, back back still in the active. mid-90s. She's st- yeah, she's still at it. I haven't talked to her in a long time, but I hear she's still going. I mean, her page is still functional. I think that's awesome because, of course, yeah, that was one of the first Mega Man fan pages. And uh, there were just a whole bunch back in the day, like on Tripod, GeoCities, all those, all those good sites in fact, if you uh, just plug, I am part of the uh, co-host of the Axe of the Blood God RPG podcast. There is an episode where I got together with Andrew Vestal, of, formerly of the Squaresoft homepage, and we talked about like what went into making those old homepages. And if you remember Dragonfire, the, the hosting service back mm. in the day, apparently it was basically a motherboard being cooled by an oscillating fan. <laughs> wow. Goodness. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, that, that was such a great resource back in the old days uh that i got into the one that i was most involved with was uh zhq which i the zelda headquarters like the very first zelda fan site <laughs> oh i remember I that had some fan fiction that was published there when i when Aww, i was like 14 we or all something. have our shame <laughs> <laughs> was it like about Link, uh, zelda kissing no it was it was about link goes on a new adventure and he meets up with the lumberjacks from A Link to the Past, and they give him an axe. Oh, yeah. And the axe becomes, like, his most important item for this new adventure that he goes on. <laughs> that sounds really cool, actually. That's very within the game's parameters. Usually when I write fanfic, it's just completely off the rails. <laughs> like, oh, you, you think you're you're a dragoon? No, you're not. You're, um, now you're a pal. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, I just don't adhere to the game rules when I write fanfiction. I smell a tie-in. The Legend of Zelda, X of the Blood God. Ooh. Sure, I'd, I'd play it. <laughs> I'm not making it, but I'll play it. Uh, so, uh, when you're... Okay, as somebody who has written fanfic and has indulged that part of your creativity, uh, do you have to hold yourself back when you are writing something like an official resource? You You have to stick with the actual events that happened in X5, yeah, X6, yeah. and, you, and you, you can't go off and, and talk about Zero's fabulous summer vacation that he had. <laughs> I think I should have been allowed to talk about his fabulous summer vacation. No, that is absolutely a very important thing, I think, because, um, I mean, fan fiction is a lot of fun, but fan theories are not what people are paying to read. Nope. So we stuck to to uh we stuck to canon very very strictly and we had a lot of people helping us with that like uh surfbot 20 was it was an enormous help to us and of course uh proto dude from the rock band corner shadow rock zx mm-hmm. like they're they're everyone who's credited in the in the book was a, a huge help to make sure we stick to the canon and of course there's a lot of really interesting kind of lost lore in the uh japanese side of things because Mega Man's a very old franchise it's had a lot of supplemental stuff that just never was translated for a western audience so, again, we had a lot of help with that. But it was still a lot of fun, like, writing within, within that unusual canon. Like, I still found a lot of ways to have fun with it. 
And honestly, I mean, there is enough stuff there for most of the characters that there really wouldn't have been room to no. add anything that we I, I think up. Zero is four pages. <laughs> I was reading the Zero entry earlier. Uh, yeah, he's he's got quite a bit of story, and it just begins in the X series and then continues beyond that. But, but oh, that's yeah. a story for another time, perhaps. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he, I've got my list of questions here. You I do have the I, teaser. I definitely want to hit some topics uh okay well this kind of goes to it uh what is what's the scope of the Mega Man x maverick hunters field guide what what games are mined for information uh but then where do you stop all of them <laughs> but well, most um, of them yeah yeah well anything that came from capcom of japan so there's like i think a uh Chinese Rockman X3 math thing that came, I think it was Chinese. Maybe, maybe it was Japanese. I don't know. It's like one of those things that, yeah, that's not in there, but <laughs> uh, basically it's all eight of the uh, games that are found in the Mega Man X legacy collection and legacy collection Two, the two uh, game boy slash game boy color games and Mega Man X command mission. Yeah, we didn't do anything with Dive, Rockman X Dive, the new mobile game that's out. Yeah, that one was uh, off limits to us. I really pushed to have uh, stuff from certain manga, like uh, the Mega Missions uh, card and manga and figures and stuff like that. And uh, there was a True Force figure, um, X Kai, that like added to the whole X Hunter lore. I wanted to have him. I wanted to have X. Uh, I wanted to have all that stuff. That's more kind of a. Maybe if someday we do kind of a uh, Maverick Hunters field guide declassified or something, maybe we can add that. Uh, Dive, I would love to tap into more. Maybe we could do a different version that's like around that somehow. Um, I'm not sure. I have to see what the future holds there. Yeah. Maybe if there's DLC for the book sometime, that should be a thing, right? Hey, there you go. <laughs> you just download it, right, plug your Ethernet port right into your book. <laughs> <laughs> Works. <laughs> Uh, for now, there's the updated editions, but yeah. Okay, all right. So, uh, you're sitting down. Uh, you have a Maverick <clears throat> in front of you and and a blank page. Yeah. You, you've got. Uh, let's see. Let's turn to a random guy. You've got Soldier Stone Kong. <laughs> you're, that was you're, david you're not sitting mine. in you're looking at soldier stone trying to make me do a spit take here <laughs> what's what is your your creative process for uh representing the the wholeness of soldier stone kong well i mean after crying at like having to include x7 no i can't <laughs> um sort of um I mean, basically, it came down to figuring out, like, what story elements he had and uh, trying to include those, kind of a biography. Then uh, looking into, when you encounter him, what does he do? Like, you know, what what do you look out for? Uh, what's he capable of? That kind of thing. And then finally, the um, when you beat him, what do you get from it? Because most of these guys... X zero later Axel they gain weapons so you need to know what they do and how they differ and that kind of thing. Yeah. I kind of took a little more of a story based approach where I would really kind of focus on those tidbits of lore that we dug up and verified and and make sure those were inserted in there and I had a little I have a, a a thing I love to write about animals so when you have all these mavericks that move like animals and they're based on animals. I just had a lot of fun with the metaphors. I'll put it that way. <laughs> uh, one thing I do want to mention is early on, I pushed for it and it was kind of pretty much soundly vetoed all around, probably for the best. But one thing I did want to do was have maybe some bios would be written from the perspective of a in series character. Mm. Like uh, the, the original, like uh, rough draft was chill penguin. That was the first one I did. And I basically kind of wrote it from Zero's perspective oh. with like kind of a little signature at the end, like noting like this is like his kind of like, you know, report on uh, Chill Penguin, basically. Cool. Uh, but again, that got vetoed. So but I thought it would help set it apart more from the first one with uh, little tidbits like that. And it was kind of a callback to uh, 
they they did some stuff like that with certain entries of the uh, Transformers. I think it was more than meets the eye um, biography books that Dreamwave made a while mm-hmm. back. Like every so often you'd find an entry like uh, Galvatron was written like uh, from the perspective of Cyclonus, his most loyal soldier. So I thought something along those lines would be uh, like he, he mentions that mentioned that Galvatron has like, you know, this third mode, which is like a laser pistol that no one is worthy to wield <laughs> and that kind of thing. And I thought something like that would be fun. But, you know, I, I think I had zero mentioned chill penguins, uh, annoying squawking going from how he spoke in Maverick Hunter X. Gotcha. Uh, but again, that didn't make the cut. So. Galvatron has no flaw. You just scratch, <laughs> scratch out the weakness on that page. There is no weakness to Lord Galvatron. <laughs> yeah, that would, it, writing as an in-universe character, I have not tried to do very often. I did that back in our, our Fire Emblem Three Houses issue where I wrote the central... F- feature as byleth <laughs> like as, as mm. if I, I were talking to a prospective student coming to the academy and like hello i'm professor byleth i'm one of the teachers here let me tell you about our school and and that was fun and male byleth or female byleth <laughs> I, I wrote as male byleth uh, i don't yeah i don't know if we had i think we had the the best high res artwork for male byleth at that point so, <laughs> so that that's always a factor into the decision yeah, my decisions are made for oh that that reminds me of another question um artwork <laughs> for these characters there's cool artwork for all of these different individual characters um but was was any of this hard to get was that part of were you guys words alone or did you get into the the placement of, of art we, assets? We mostly handled words. Uh, Udon mostly took care of the artwork. They definitely took care of the placement. I just gave him, a, thankfully, a doc file and said, here you go. Because <laughs> there's one thing I hate about being a writer in this modern age is that you are expected to, to tool with the CMS and all of that. And it's, uh, I, I just love the relief of handing over a text document and saying, here, that's not my problem anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do know that we did have to get custom art done for some of the command mission entries because there, there was missing a lot of official artwork there, as well as I think the X8 Mavericks were only officially only had like busts for some reason. So yeah. they, they got full body art this time around. I think X7 was uh, part of that group, too. X7, um, X8 and command mission, I believe, were the three that had most of the original art. Like Soldier Stone Kong, <laughs> <laughs> for Good example. Old Soldier Stone Kong. Just, just He's for, so for cool. a random example. I keep I keep talking about him. My my actual favorite. You guys can tell me your favorite. Uh, my favorite has always been Tidal Whale. <laughs> oh, Duff McWhalen. <laughs> Good old Duffy. Uh, uh, that that was. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, because I I love the name, and I I love the fact that. It wasn't his name originally, and it was kind of, it was a name that was only known, like, like if you were a casual fan and you only played X5, you saw that this guy was named Duff McWhalen, and you thought that the whole <laughs> series was just completely bonkers. It's like, what? He thought the whole series had lost his uh, mind. Man, that, that was a rough period with Capcom and translations back then, because if I'm, and those these are probably all named at the top, but... His original name, I think, was Tidal Makuin or mm-hmm. something. Uh, I believe the uh, X5 instruction booklet either used that or Tidal Whale. Uh, then the game had Duff McWhalen. And then later they uh, revamped it because the... Well, people have warmed up to the Guns N' Roses names over time, but is pretty divisive overall yeah. and now he's officially Tidal Whale. And I just tried to work in all the aliases, so it's like, you know, kind of like... His name is Tidal Whale, but he's also known as this, that, the other, and uh, Duff McWhalen. So, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, choose your own canon, basically. Yes, I, I appreciated that that was included. I was I was one of the people that was pushing for an official name change for a long time. And when they announced the Mega Man X Legacy Collections, I think it was years ago, I was on an, an internet forum somewhere... And I said, you know, this would really be a good opportunity for them to fix the localization of <laughs> X5 
and and get rid of the Guns N' Roses names and, and make his name Tidal Whale and all this, I was shouted down by so many Duff <laughs> McWhalen fans. They're like, no, Duff you will rules not take Duff away life. from us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! I actually wrote uh, most of the most of my favorite Mavericks. I got to write the profiles for, and that would be uh, let's see. I did Wheel Gator. I did uh, Flame Stag. I did um, Zero, of course, who's not really an animal or a Maverick. Yeah, uh, anyone I liked, I did. Put it that way. That and dirty. of course, Doctor Kane. Uh, I did write Doctor Kane. Uh, I do have a soft spot for him. All right, who uh, who is the the target audience? for the Mega Man X Maverick Hunters Field Guide. Who are you hoping seeks this out and reads this book? I am hoping for, um, of course, there's older fans our age who grew up with Mega Man X who are kind of lonely for a new game. And we also kind of made it accessible for younger readers. Like, I don't think it's an extremely hard read. I might have been bad and used some, you know, SAT words, which I, I really try not to do most of the time. But I am hoping it's accessible to, I don't know, like say a kid who's 11 or 12 and I think would have like a, a good time reading it and maybe get into the whole like cool killer robot aspect of it. And maybe even like the flowery crap I, I wrote up. Who knows? I, I hope they I hope they like it. My opinion on some of the words and terms is if you don't understand it, then that 12 year old can take out their phone, go to Google and punch it in. I'm sure they'll do fine. <laughs> That's still not good writing, though. Writing should be accessible. Writing should always be accessible first and foremost <laughs> when possible. I think if you can inform people of new terms to expand the vocabulary, that's not a bad thing. So. I try not to go, oh, okay, put it this way. I try not to use any, like, 15-syllable words. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fair. I'll tell you, the so far, the number one fan of this book in the Thomas household uh, has been my three-year-old. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's cute. Wow. Who got hold of my copy of the book uh, for a whole week. He He took it on a road trip to his grandparents' house, uh, and, and it was gone out of the house for a week. I didn't know where it was. It took, he, had, he had taken <laughs> it with him as, as reading in, in the car, uh, and, he, oh, and wow. he just loved just, just flipping through and seeing all the characters, and it, it's hilarious that the most damaged page <laughs> is Tidal Whales. <laughs> he, he clearly spent the most time looking at Tidal Whale. He's, he's, well, who he's a young Duff fan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I I love that you know somebody his age that doesn't even know how to read yet can flip through and appreciate the artwork of the characters. And then I have my older sons uh, who can really get into it, and this can be a gateway for them to get into these games. Um, you know, we all grew up with the full. Mega Man series, right? I, I yeah. have actual mm -hmm. childhood memories of going to a department store and browsing through the selection of NES games on sale and seeing that absolutely awful Mega Man 1 box art. <laughs> like, like, it's oh, not just something that I have learned about years later on the internet. It's like, I, <laughs> I saw it with my own eyes when I was a, and now I you're was a young man. You know, that was burned in, directly into my retinas. <laughs> I'm sorry. And that's where I started. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't our first game. Our, we didn't buy that one and take that one home. Our first game was Mega Man 2, which I think was was the right <laughs> choice to make. My first was 3, well, there you go. which is also a great game. Uh, My first was 1. The first one I beat was 2. I came back and beat 1 a little while later, after I beat Mega Man 4, I think. Because 4 gave me a tough enough time, and when I finally beat that, I'm like, you know what? I might be ready. Yeah. <laughs> So, back to the rental store. Yes, I, well, I like the existence of books like this that collect the history of a series uh, in a single volume. Uh, because I have seen, especially my oldest son, Carter, uh, a couple of years ago, the, the Super Mario, the big yellow Super Mario book that, David, I think you also worked on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did a little he work there. He has read that book from cover to cover so many times that the cover is nearly falling off. Ah, uh, that's wow. nice. And he <laughs> has become such an expert on the Mario series. Like, he knows all these enemy names. He knows where to go in 
level three two to go in this pipe and go over here like it's like games that i haven't even sat him down to actually play he knows so much about because of the existence of books like this you know he'll just i think these guidebooks are these kinds of guidebooks are pretty good for encouraging kids to read as well i don't think guidebooks and comic books and stuff like that get nearly enough credit for helping kids learn how to read because i know i learned how to read by like reading like mad magazine and and archie comics and that's why i'm warped today but the point (laughs) is there was the picture and there was the words and i was like i want to understand what this picture means so i'm going to struggle with this word and so that's how i did it uh and i'm maybe schools are more open than they were when i was a kid but they absolutely would not have considered like a a guidebook like legitimate reading material they both would have been like no you'll read this harry potter novel and like it and that's just not how reading should work i think that if a, a child is absorbing a, a guidebook then they're learning those words they're learning that association it's, it's really good all reading is good yeah and now we've got the robot master field guide a scholastic version offered through that stuff yeah so, hey. a scholastic version of the robot master field guide and apparently it did really well yeah but uh, going back to what I was saying before, yeah, with the Target, of course, it's uh, Mega Man fans, something to kind of, you know, give them something to go through and hopefully find something out new. Uh, also, you know, it's good for anybody who's tried out the games for the first time with the Legacy Collections and they want to learn more than what's presented in the games. Because back then, most of the stuff was supplementary and we tried to kind of gather as much of that as we could here. And, uh, yeah, like I was saying, like, I, I didn't write it specifically, like, uh, with, like, you know, big words in mind or anything, but I did try to, like, not dumb it down in any way so that, like you said, like, you know, you're seeing words, you're learning and that kind of thing. I tried to, you know, kind of keep a balance there so that, because, yeah, when I was growing up and I was, re- like, reading comics and stuff like that, I'd uh, see words that I didn't know and I'd find out what they meant and, you know go from there or learn from context what it means so one time i saw i was reading an archie comic and i saw the word hours and i took it to my mom and said mommy mommy this says whores <laughs> and she's like what what and she i handed the comic she's like oh no dear that's not what it said oh my goodness all right on that note <laughs> <laughs> moving right along okay all right uh we're talking about Mega Man x uh, if you're talking about Mega Man x you have to float some ideas out about the next game, X9, when's it going to happen? Uh, first first, God, first uh, question, do you think X9 happens in our lifetime? Uh, second question, uh, if you were in charge of creating a Maverick robot boss uh, for Mega Man X and Zero and maybe Axel to battle against in X9... What would that maverick be? What what animal would they be based on? What powers would they have? Oh gosh, um, I first of all, I don't know if X Nine is happening in our lifetime. I can see a reboot before I see an X Nine. In which case, well, thanks for leaving us with a cliffhanger. We really appreciate that. Um, but I would. There, there's actually a fan game out there that's been worked on for many many years called Mega Man X Corruption, mm. and it actually looks really good and it looks extremely professional. I would actually not mind seeing that game brought under Capcom's wing and maybe transformed into a, a commercial product because it's kind of a Mega Man Metroidvania, which uh, it looks like it has the potential to work really well, but I, I, I couldn't say for sure if they're going to do anything with that. I doubt they will. But if I did have an X9, um, I don't know. I really like snow leopards. I wouldn't mind having a snow leopard uh, be able to, like, say, run across, like, deep snow while X, you know, sinks and dies or whatever. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, X9 in our lifetimes, well, as far as a reboot goes, I mean, they already did that. It did not work. No thanks to the hardware it was on, I'm I was sure. going to say, it was on the PSP. Yeah. What did anyone expect out of that? But um, in our lifetimes, like, how long are we living here? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the first question. But generally speaking, I think it will happen sooner or later. Um, whether it's sooner or later is anybody's guess. I think it's just going to take... Uh, the right person and the right position of power with the right pitch to kind of get Capcom to move on it. Um, and what Maverick? Gosh. Um, that, that is a tough one because they've done so many animals already and it's like, gosh, what's left? Um, <laughs> no more animals. All the animals are gone. They're all Mavericks now. I, I guess a safe one I could probably say, like, They've done a bear, they've done an armadillo, they've done cats, they've done uh, 
dinosaurs. They've done dragons. Uh, going back uh, on the dinosaurs, though, maybe an ankylosaur would be cool. Cause I think that's probably pretty, like. pretty cool, or Triceratops. Cool. They already did a Triceratops. Well, I talked about the tank in Mega Man X2. No, I'm talking about Silverhorn in Command Mission. Oh, that barely counts. I thought he was a plug for the longest time. I didn't think he was actually anything except an electrical <laughs> plug. Then I realized, oh, he's His a element is water! <laughs> <laughs> deadly, as, deadly as he can get. Oh, goodness. I guess. To himself, maybe. Well, I, I like the ones that have clever and or stupid names. Uh, so I was thinking about this. I think that I would like to see a maverick uh, named Cleaver Beaver. <laughs> it's a beaver. A beaver would be a good one. with cleavers. That's, that's, you you, <laughs> That'd be you beat awesome. him and you get a giant meat cleaver to use to beat some meat-themed. I'd like to <laughs> see a, a liger. I like ligers. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, more cats would be good. Um, there was uh, another I was thinking of. I don't know if we... No, wait, no, wait. There was Rainy Turtleoid, yeah. So we have had a turtle. Yeah. So, never mind. I know that Mega Man Zero series tends to have uh, Mavericks, uh, well, they call themselves. What do they call them? I don't remember. They don't think they're Mavericks. But anyway, they call themselves, uh, they're based on deities, like animals that are important to certain religions. Like you have... Oh, the, the uh, Midos Reploids? Yeah, yeah. Like Hanuman is, is one who's represented. Yeah. Anubis is another who's represented. Um, Ganesh, the elephant, is another. Like, there's uh, some interesting things going on there. So, when I wouldn't mind if they had, like, a similar twist for new Mavericks in the X series. Well, speaking of the Zero series, uh, I noticed that at the end of this book, there's a little bit of a hint toward that, oh, who's that, that extension of uh, the continuity of Zero specifically. Uh, is it possible, and if you're not allowed to say, then don't say, uh, is it possible that we get a, a third volume of this ongoing set that perhaps explores that part of the Mega Man series or a different part. Sure, I would... Either is possible. Yeah, I mean, if you like the stuff, like, by all means, let Udon know, hey, we wouldn't mind another volume of this in, in some other Mega Man continuity. We'd, we'd love to write it, heck. Yeah, uh, and of course, it probably depends on sales, too, but last I heard, this was doing pretty good, so... Keep buying. Uh, buying and frying. You, you got Zero Series, you got you got Battle Network, which I think would be, I mean, there's... Battle Network would be a good one. I think that would be a very high demand plenty one. Plenty of, uh, yeah. of dot .exes um, to explore. Oh, God. And that has always been one of my favorite things of the Battle Network series, is going back and comparing, of, of taking the Battle Network dot .exe version of, like, Cut Man. Guts Man or whatever, and comparing it to the original classic series Robot Master that is sharing the same name. Yeah, so, have, seeing that the first half of that comparison already exists, having the second half to be able to sit next to it and go back and forth would be pretty cool. Just saying, that would be awesome. Yeah, because I, be I love some of the differences they made between those versions. Uh, and I'd also <laughs> this probably can't happen, but a a <laughs> book that isn't the bosses. But it's just the common enemies. Oh my gosh, that would be a lot. That, of that would be a lot. It would be a lot. But but yeah. I I foresee yep. I foresee a, a cover that, that doesn't even have Mega Man on it. It just has the little hard hat yellow <laughs> met, met guy, and then there's all the different and then kinds. There's a bubble bat over here, and then there's you know yeah. the the guy that shoots out penguins and has a crank on his head. <laughs> <laughs> I love that little guy. Yeah. The that's a good one. Going, yeah, you could go deep in, into that territory. I feel just free ideas yeah. to, to to take take to Udon. You say you've got you've got yeah. one guaranteed customer already. Let's make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> what more do you need? Uh, all right, guys. Well, we are running low on our allotted recording time here on Riverside. So, do you have any final thoughts to share on the Mega Man X Maverick Hunter's Field Guide? Buy my book. Buy my book. <laughs> um, <laughs> gosh. Um, I don't know. Do you have, do you have anything uh, in mind, Nadia? Uh, well, all I can really say is uh, we had a lot of fun writing the book, and it yeah. really kind of takes me back to those those fandom days. And uh, Mega Man is the reason why I got into writing, basically. I started writing 
fan fiction and stuff like that. So being able to stretch that muscle for an official capacity is it is pretty mind blowing. Like I still can't get over that it actually happened, and I'm really I'm really grateful that it did. And I hope the fans enjoy it. I hope they kind of get a little you know, enjoy a little extra flavor that they get when they read it. I hope new kids, I hope they give the books to their kids and their kids enjoy it too. And, uh, yeah. So just spread the love and, and thank you so much if you did support us. And, uh, if you didn't support us, what are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a fun time and I hope we get to do more of it. And as Nadia said, if you know somebody, a kid or otherwise, who might be interested in Mega Man, maybe they, uh, checked out the uh, Mega Man fully charged cartoon and they're curious about more like that. Obviously not more of that, but um, you know, maybe uh, loan them a copy and or get it as a gift. Hey, <laughs> there you go. Perfect gift option. It it's probably yeah. can fit inside of a Christmas stocking. Yeah. It's gotta be creative. Yeah. Stretch it a bit. Shove it down in there. We've got, <laughs> we've got wide stockings in our house. It, it fits tear right one, in there. <laughs> tear one side if you need yeah. to. No. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this talk. Nadia Oxford, David Oxford, the Oxford super team, the Oxford duo. Do you, do you have a superhero team of the two of you? <laughs> you should. It, it's funny. We actually like kind of do separate things in terms of our, our work, except when we come together to create cool things. <laughs> the, the double Oxford attack. All right. Well, thank you so much yeah. for being with us, and we'll talk to you again. Absolutely. The next time you do something cool or we have anything else we want to talk about, really. And there you have it. Both the Mega Man X Maverick Hunters Field Guide and the Mega Man Robot Master Field Guide are available wherever fine books are sold. Buy a copy and support David and Nadia's work. We'll put some links in the description below. And just for the record, on the back of the Mega Man X Maverick Hunters Field Guide, who is that? That's right, Soldier Stone Kong. I knew he was important. With that, this NF video interview is complete. In fact, let's just say, mission accomplished. <laughs>